Today is a special day. I'm upgrading my personal rig with a 12th gen Intel Core i9-12900K. Today's video is sponsored by Intel and Intel will be providing me the necessary tools to upgrade to their 12th generation of processors. Currently, I'm running an Intel Core i9-9900K and an RTX 3090 that does mostly what I needed to do. Let's open this PC up and make the transition to the next generation. First things first, let's go over what's currently in this PC. As I already mentioned, Intel's Core i9-9900K, which is an 8-core 16-thread processor, running anywhere between 3.6 to 5 gigahertz. I've got 64 gigs of Trident Z RAM at 3000 megahertz and a PNY XLR8 GeForce RTX 3090. This combo has suited my personal needs for a while. Now we get to move on to the next generation of Intel processors with the Alder Lake Intel Core i9-12900K. The Core i9-12900K is a little bit more interesting than the 9900K. It has 8 normal cores but has 24 threads. How is this done? Well, there's Intel's new hybrid technology called Efficiency Cores or E cores. This is a smaller core that runs at a lower frequency than the large performance cores or P cores for short. So you have your eight normal sized P cores that are hyper threaded making 16 threads total just like the 9900K. However, the 12900K has the eight E cores which are not hyper threaded making a total of 24 threads. The E cores can be utilized to offload certain smaller or simpler processes off the P cores. This makes for some very interesting workload performance metrics. Other from that, the 12900K supports DDR5 memory, PCIe Gen 5 and 4, and hosts 20 PCIe lanes. To accompany our 12900K today, we have MSI's Z690 Tomahawk motherboard and Core Liquid S360 all-in-one. And they also supplied 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4 3200 RAM. However, I'll be using my Trident Z RAM today since there's 64 gigs of it, and I'll use the Corsair RAM for a future project. Intel also sent over their Core i5-12600K, which will make for another appearance in a future video. And this is where I think the 16 gigs of Corsair's Vengeance RGB Pro RAM will fit better into place. The 12600K will work well for most people anyways. It has 6P cores and 4E cores, making a total of 16 threads. That's a lot. This will provide plenty of overhead for most gaming and productivity tasks that don't need the high-end side of hardware. I think for me, this will suit well in a console-sized or a mini PC for on-the-go applications or a home theater PC of sorts. Anyways, let's start the build montage and then get some benchmarks on the screen. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the build montage there. I also want to preface that this architecture is better optimized through Windows 11. It handles the juggling of which processes to dedicate to an E-Core or P-Core, with an exception to a few programs that are already optimized for this. However, I'll be sticking with Windows 10 for now, which will do the job just fine. Regardless of Windows 10 or 11, Intel uses a technology called ThreadDirector. This helps delegate tasks and processes between the P-Cores and E-Cores to make them work together efficiently. This technology exists on the hardware level, 
as well as the software level. That's why I mentioned that Windows 11 is better optimized for it. However, this technology does work with Windows 10. Now let's get some benchmarks for this new and improved machine. These benchmarks best represent what I use this PC primarily for and what I hold as some sort of baseline for performance. Each gaming benchmark uses a total of three passes. The gaming benchmarks will be set to 1080p to help shift the frame rate bottleneck from the GPU to the CPU. First up is Modern Warfare 2019. I used a private match in Hackney Yard with six bots to replicate the same conditions each time. The 12900K showed a significant difference in average and 1% low FPS. There's also a 30 FPS difference between both the average and 1% lows. This is a significant and noticeable difference for me as I've been gaming with my 9900K system for three years with this game. Cyberpunk 2077 is next and the environment I chose was downtown Night City and driving a few laps around the block. Cyberpunk is certainly more of a GPU bound game but it also piqued my interest if I would see any noticeable difference in this section of the game. This wasn't as large of a jump as Modern Warfare, but that was to be expected. However, the difference is noticeable. The average is nearing 100 FPS here, and I'll take every frame I can get in downtown Night City, where it usually chugs a lot. Adobe Premiere is the last test here. I ran a 4K render on both systems with the same project and settings. This saw a 26% decrease in render time and just shy of four minutes faster than my previous system. These benchmarks best represent what my PC is being used for, along with streaming, photo editing, video encoding, and more. The 12900K has improved performance in all those areas and has shown a decent generational leap coming from the traditional physical hyper-threaded architecture that we have become accustomed to. When upgrading my PC, I look for something that can cater to everything I throw at it because I pretty much max it out every day that I use it. Whether it's rendering a YouTube video, creating large vector digital art, or gaming at the highest settings for my monitor, I need to make sure I can do it all and do it efficiently since I use it mostly for work with my brand and YouTube content. That's where I think the Core i9 12900K fits so well into this upgrade. I can render my videos while working on my thumbnail simultaneously. That small anecdote alone is enough for me to cherish this upgrade. Once again, I thank Intel for sponsoring this video and collaborating with me to upgrade this workstation. Links to the sponsored products will be listed down in the description below. Thank you all for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.